So last night, Elon Musk live streamed FSD V12. As you can see here, it now has 8.6 million views. So many people tuned in because this was highly anticipated. FSD V12 is hardly using any code. Now, let me show you what I mean by this. I made a tweet last night trying to summarize some of the most important quotes that I thought Elon Musk said during the live stream. And as you can see here, Elon Musk liked my tweet. That is the first time that has happened. So let's go into why this was important. He said, there is no line of code that says slow down for speed bumps. It is just doing this entirely on video training. Now, what we are talking about with FSD is of course, full self-driving. And for a long time now, there's been code that the car has to follow. But things are changing with FSD 12. And now what Tesla is doing is they're just feeding the neural nets in the system a bunch of video. And through watching video, the car is learning how to drive. So there is no line of code that says give clearance to bicyclists. It's just doing what people do. There's no line of code that says stop at a stop sign. Now, the reason it's important to shift from code to AI is because as Elon says here, this version runs faster than the version that is a mixture of AI and software, meaning it requires less frames per second to operate the system. That is important when you're driving on the road because the faster your computer can look at the world and react to it, the better because there's less chance you're gonna get in an accident. So it's just safer. So how is Tesla gonna teach all of their cars how to drive without writing any code? Like I said, they're going to feed it a ton of video. Where are they getting this video? What if they show the car bad video? That's all part of the problem. But here's the most important point. Tesla is getting their video from other Tesla cars. So when they're showing the computer video and teaching it how to drive, the computer is watching video that comes from a Tesla car in the real world. Each Tesla has eight cameras on it that's looking around so when the computer watches that video and then you equip the computer with neural nets and put it on the road and say drive now after watching all that video, it can do it because the video that it watched, the perspective is the exact same perspective that the car has when it's driving in real time. Does that make sense? So now that the computer is watching millions of videos, it's essentially getting real experience because the perspective of those eight cameras, that footage that it's watching is the exact same perspective it has when it's driving in real time. Now, you might have seen some other autonomous vehicle companies like Cruise or Waymo. Maybe you visited San Francisco and seen them in real life. Well, you probably saw those big chunky things on top of the car. Those are known as LiDAR. And here is a list of companies relying on this clunky technology. One, two, three, four, five, six, almost 10 companies that are spending hundreds of thousands of dollars per car to equip it with this um, technology called LiDAR. What LiDAR does is it basically helps intake the surroundings. What these companies are doing is they are processing cities, fully rendering them in HD, telling the car exactly where every corner and crevice is so that it can drive through it and know exactly where everything is. But this isn't really AI. This is similar to what Boston Dynamics does with their robots and teaching them to dance. It's all programmed. They're programming these cars, putting them on railways to drive through these cities. Whereas Tesla is feeding these computers millions of videos. And that's why last night's live stream by Elon Musk showing um, FSD V12 is so important because he made a big bet. Look at everybody is going one way. And one company went the other way and said, we can do AI, real world AI with just vision, just cameras. And last night, Elon live streamed himself on his own platform doing just that. So anyone relying on LiDAR is doomed. You'll see. Now, why are they doomed? Because it's not profitable. You can't scale. Those LiDAR equipments cost hundreds of thousands of dollars. You can't make millions of them and send them out like Tesla is going to do with their vehicles. They already have 4 million vehicles on the road that can drive themselves. That number is going to get up to 100 million by 2033. 100 million Teslas that can just all of a sudden 
drive themselves beautifully. It's going to become an asset that people can buy. Elon Musk says vision does require solving real world AI, which is hard, but vision is fundamentally superior to LIDAR. It is hard. These companies don't like doing hard things. That's why they outsource all of the software that's in their vehicles. In a, in a, in a Ford, they have a hundred different contractors that help build the software. So when they need to make an adjustment, they've got to go through a hundred different people. They don't even know what the software is in their car. This is who Tesla is competing with. <laughs> but of course, with Tesla going in the vision direction, training through video, they need a lot of compute. Sawyer Merritt says here, Tesla is about to turn on a $250 million, 10,000 unit NVIDIA H100 GPU cluster. Tesla is on pace to spend $2 billion this year on compute. They are investing heavily in this solution because they know it is going to work. The amount of money they are spending on compute is a great sign for Tesla investors. Tim Zayman works at Tesla and he thinks they may have the largest training data sets in the world. I know a lot of you probably know about the Nvidia hype lately. I mean, the stock is on an amazing run because of how successfully they are selling AI hardware to companies this year. Well, Tesla is going to be the biggest beneficiary of that hardware. They are taking that hardware and making it useful in the real world. Real world AI is coming. Tesla currently has 400,000 beta testers who are actively using full self-driving in the real world. And how Tesla is making full self-driving better is these beta testers use the product and when it makes a mistake, when it goes into a situation that it doesn't understand and they have to intervene and take control of the car, they press a button that sends footage of the situation to Tesla's team. The Tesla team takes that footage. They look at what went wrong. Then they find video of similar situations and they feed that video into the computer. And that's how Tesla will get around these edge cases and make the cars better in certain areas that are they, they are currently struggling in. So tonight we saw Elon Musk use the new version, the version that has barely any code from end to end. It is just neural nets, just what the computer has learned from watching all this video. But are there other implications? Robert Scoble says our world changed tonight. In 10 years, we will look back at the first public demo of a robot that learned to move around the world by watching only videos. This is a paradigm shift in how software is built. Multimodal AIs are here at full scale. Here's the big implications. This speeds up the humanoid robot for me. Imagine you showing your robot how to make grandma's recipe, and from then on, it can make it every night if you want. I don't know if you know about Tesla's humanoid robot, but it's a product that's a natural um, acceleration from the Tesla full self-driving car, because all you have to do is take the product, the vision that Tesla has been working on in the car and put it in a humanoid robot. So now imagine you have a humanoid robot in your house. And we know now that these systems learn from video. So what you do is you take your Tesla robot, for example, in my kitchen, and I show it how to make the pancakes that I really like. I show it a video. Now my Tesla robot knows how to make pancakes because I showed it a video in my kitchen of how how to do it. You don't have to go and code it how to make pancakes with its hands and its balance and all that complexity. You just show it a video. Let's hypothesize more. Maybe there's an app store. It's a little different than Apple's app store because you know you're not having developers coming in with their code to teach the robot how to do different things. Like let's say you wanted to teach your robot how to mow the lawn and you wanted to go download an app that will get installed on your personal robot. So your robot will now learn how to mow your lawn. That's not really going to be the case. All that's going to be the case is this. There's millions of robots in existence in households and factories all around the world. And they're all going through experiences. But think of it as a hive mind. When one robot has an experience, they all have that experience. It's kind of scary, right? But they're going to learn extremely fast. It's a snowball that's getting bigger and bigger, and it's going to become a very helpful robot over time due to that. 
And because you can show it videos of it doing things in your own space, the robot will get familiar with your space and it will become very helpful. Now, what we're talking about is a company trading at around $750 billion. NVIDIA, the seller of these chips, is trading at about $1.1 trillion, about $400 billion more than Tesla. One company is taking another company's product and using it in the real world to create products that have real world intelligence that are going to change the fucking economy. And another company is selling chips and it's worth $400 billion more. Tesla is trading at a 1.1x PEG rating. That's cheaper than most of the other mega cap companies like Google and Meta who are not making advancements like this. I mean, look at the potential growth here that's not getting priced in by analysts. Tesla's P forward PE ratio right now is 45. The S&P 500's forward PE ratio is 20. It's only twice as expensive as the whole goddamn S&P 500. I mean, just the vehicle sales are going at 37%. So Gary Black says there's 38% upside just on the sale of the vehicles. And this stuff is just about to happen. FST is just about to happen. Robots are coming. We saw it on a live stream last night. Eight and a half million people last night saw FSD. I mean, 90% of those people probably saw FSD for the very first time. The AI hype is going to very quickly latch on to Tesla. And we're going to see a 2020-like implosion of the stock price very soon, maybe on Monday. This was a huge event. It's like watching Steve Jobs turn on the iPhone for the very first time. If you haven't watched it yet, watch it. And thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe for the next one. Goodbye.